One of the things that I would uh, add in as a question to both Mike and Jack would be the, the rise of the so-called digital agency. And, and I, I guess that may not even be a legitimate distinction any longer because we're very close to the day um, when everything will be digital. So uh, the agency distinctions, I think, are going to have to fall away. But uh, there's certainly a line of reasoning that says that group within the agency structures that focuses on interactive, if, if you will, not using the digital distinction, should end up being the center of the universe in, in, in media agencies. Well, yeah, I would, I would have to say that uh, I don't think there's any industry in the world that isn't touched by the, the digital re revolution. That's no different than, than the media agency businesses. Uh, from, the, from the perspective of, uh, as I try to think of the elements of our business from research and the accessibility of data to glean richer, better consumer insights, to strategy, to activation, uh, I th and then ultimately being more accountable and with the kind of metrics that the digital world gives us uh, to our clients in, in terms of outcomes and results. Um, I think, though, that, uh, and I think Mike's in a similar place, I think that uh, those digital specialties, Michael, have to be fully embedded uh, in our operation. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, while no one's perfect at it, I think that all the, uh, the agencies that, uh, that I'll be speaking in front of you today are working to that end. Uh, because I think at the end of the day, what a media agency brings to clients, uh, or what it should be bringing to clients, is, neutral, is the neutrality of thinking and solutions. So, uh, you know, we, we don't want to be bringing, you know, we're not oriented to a 30-second TV commercial, nor should we be oriented or overly directed to a digital solution. I think that why, why our part of the business, pardon me, uh, why, our, why our part of the business is growing and why I think clients increasingly are confident in our collective abilities is because they count on that objectivity and that neutrality. I think that all the CEOs that we'll be talking with this morning have done a terrific job of trying to stay ahead of the curve and been succeeding. Let's just talk for a minute about some of what we might term your hothouse sort of planning, your hothouse thoughts or experimentation to create, whether they're specialized units you, you know, sort of parse off to the side for a bit to see what you can incubate and experiment with and then ultimately embed back in uh, or not. How are you making, both of you, pushing, you know, the learning curve and the innovation within your organization? Well, I, I think it's, I mean, I think, again, it comes back to where you recruit people from. I mean, we have, we have you know, creatively orientated people working at, at, at PhD, both in North America and in the UK. And, uh, you know, particularly in the content area, you know, we, uh, you know, we try and you know, recruit people that have got a lot of experience in that area. We have uh, divisions around the world that, that do that. And, you know, we're actually being involved in making our first full-length feature film in the UK shortly. Uh, and, I mean, that's a challenge for us. You know, we have to find the right kind of talent to do that. You know, you have to, you know, it, it, it challenges your existing model of recruitment, quite honestly. But, um, you know, I mean, you know, that's an ongoing problem. It's a, it's, it's a daily issue of trying to get the right kind of talent, more creative kind of people. Yeah, I guess, John, I give you three areas that I think we're trying to push uh, from our side. Is one, uh, we're going to continue both on Zenith Optimedia side and the Starcom Media Vest side uh, with different titles, but the essence is uh, the recruitment of, I guess, what are called in this in the ad industry account planners. Yeah. Uh, uh, and those people are called different things in those two different brand networks, but the idea is to harness the power, the brilliance of those people who often were trained in the industry to help creatives write better content and messaging, and now to help us be more intelligent and more clever as it relates to channel selection. Uh, I think another area uh, that's you know, relatively new to us uh, and one our, with the acquisition of Phone Valley is, is to establish a, 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 global mark, a global mobile marketing practice. Uh, and then the last one I would suggest is uh, maybe a little bit more on the bleeding edge and our folks in Danu, I think maybe creating a, another discipline that uh, that's creative in orientation. Um, I've heard them call it two different things, creative architects or media designers. But in my mind, these people who I see in this practice, of the handful that have started it, are people who are really right-brained and creative, but they have a tremendous media sensibility about them. Yeah. So maybe the, in, in our future world, there are copywriters, art directors, and media designers, or pick the name for them. But again, the work that I saw yesterday from, uh, 
from Czech Poirot. It was magnificent work. And you think about, I think that in his term, in, in our terminology, in his work, I think that's all about brilliant creativity with a strong media sensibility to it. What I'd like to do now is, is grab one question that we can ask the audience to vote on at the end of this uh, first session. And, and what I'd like to do for a moment is focus on uh, something that happened at Johnson & Johnson last year. Naked, recently acquired by a small Australian holding company, uh, had what many would consider a stunning win in the Johnson & Johnson uh, review. And I guess the question I'd like to pose to the audience, if we could get a quick read, was, uh, and that's really along the lines of what Jack just talked about in terms of media design more with an agnostic approach. Does the audience see that as a harbinger of things to come or just an aberration? Could we get a vote on that, Charlie? Well, that's not exactly the question we asked, but... Okay, we can vote on that question. It's all good. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll move to the next slide. How about a show of hands, doing it the old-fashioned way? Well, part of my answer would be it certainly reinforces the importance of strategy and in yeah. innovation. Yeah. Uh, that I think uh, those of us that compete against naked you know, certainly take into line. And I think that's a good thing. It reinforces... Yeah. Uh, that you know, this is in, the media industry isn't about uh, buying spots and pods anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in recent years we've put far too much emphasis on the buying on the buying area. Uh, you know, and I think you know what we're hearing from clients is they do want more work in the strategic area. They want better work, and if if we don't do that, then yeah, it will become more common. You will see. Uh, well, smaller agencies. Well, I, up I think build, building off that, a lot of conversations last night over the Bellinis was about growth, and I think that we all, as we help uh, the marketers, we help each other's businesses because what we're seeing out there is the more um, the more quality thinking that helps a client differentiate in the marketplace. The more that we all differentiate our services and our value, including all the way to media inventory. So I guess the question off of that would be, how are you training? You know, forget about the acquiring of the talent. Once you've got the talent in there and you've got to tr uh, train them around the functional skills, how do you then continue to have them thinking in a growth-oriented mindset? You, you have to be relentless in terms of training, and you also have to be imaginative in terms of yeah. who you get to, to, to train your people. You have to get people from outside disciplines to come and, and, and train them in, in, in all kinds of different areas, quite honestly. And it's, a, it's an incredibly valuable part of our industry, and it's something that we need to invest more money in, quite frankly, going forward. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use this. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I, I really won't add anything more to my, uh, Mike. I probably, re I think he said the right answer, and we probably move on to other questions. Well, I'd like to thank Mike Cooper and Jack Clues uh, for participating in this first lightning round. Thank you very much. I'd like to, to now uh, invite Stephen King, the CEO of Zenith Optimedia Group, and Alexander Schmidt-Vogel, the CEO of Mediacom, to join us on the stage. For all the talk about digital, we're sort of moving backwards. We're off the handheld mics. We're doing shows of hands. We're uh, doing a Yeah, that's great. Cheers. This next section is going to focus on new forms of content uh, led by the media agencies. So I think uh, we let Mike off the stage just a second too early because uh, I think his, uh, his point that he sort of threw out there as he was uh, heading off uh, in, in PhD doing a full-length feature film was quite interesting and probably a nice segue into this panel, which is really, um, I think if there's sort of a buzzword out there in, in, of, of this year, it's probably branded content. And everyone has had, uh, I think every business along the value chain, whether you're a conventional media owner or a marketer like Unilever, we saw some examples uh, yesterday, or creative or media agencies, everyone seems to be talking a great deal about uh, branded content. And I think, you know, the first question, uh, setting this up really quite simply is, let's talk a bit about what you're both doing, uh, where you're both uh, learning and, and experimenting, and a bit about your appetite for risk in this area. Because no matter what we say, there's certainly no, uh, at this point, uh, benchmarks 
that are consistent enough across the industry. So let's just talk about your experimentations in this, where you think you're succeeding, and your comfort level in this area. Can I ask you a question to the audience? I don't know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> the actual blockbuster movie in this season is 10,000 BC, by the way, from your company. Who has seen that movie once? Can you raise your hand, please? Okay, let's say 5%. But now, who has seen the movie twice? Anybody? Nobody? So I assume nobody has seen the movie three times. This was a 100 million production and was a 100 minutes movie. How can we all, being so-called communication experts, expect consumers to want to see a $1 million 30-second commercial 10, 20, 30, 40 times. I believe we all are guilty on that. And therefore, we have to think about not just branded content and how we enter with the brand editorial content in an acceptable and even welcomed way of the consumers. We even have to think about the ad agency side that still... 80% of the spending is behind boring commercials which we force consumers as, soon as, as long as we can to see 10, 20, 30 times. Therefore, branded content is an important perspective for the future and we have to stop to force consumers to see the same commercial so many times. Yes, and we have to learn, and we are still on the learning curve, to enter the content area with exciting stuff. One example, uh, in Germany actually, last year there was the Art Directors Club uh, uh, organization coming together and there was one content done by the client, Volkswagen, the ad agency and the media agency. It was a German funny character done by a comedian. It was half a million production and media cost and the media value today is close to 40 million because it became a great hype in Germany and lots of downloads are still today because the ad agencies and the media agency together developed a character which was then just moving on and creating a huge hype in a viral campaign. And therefore, we have to enter that area, but we all have to change because 20 years ago we did old-fashioned planning and buying. Today we do communication strategy, but we have to learn what the consumer wants in terms of editorial content, branded content, and we have to find a way to get receptivity, engagement, up to advocacy from the consumer. Um, well, that's difficult to follow that, that answer. Um, I, I think, uh, if I can remember the question, the, uh, I think, you know, if we look back and... and, uh, and uh, okay, if we, I mean, if we go back, you know, 20 years ago, Zenith started 20 years ago this year, and our role with the clients was purely executional, and uh, people like Sir John Hegarty certainly wasn't worried about the setting up of a media agency, and we were a, we were a transactional partner for our clients, buying large volumes of time and space. As Alexander said, over the last 20 years, we, we've moved from a transactional, executional agency to one that is now a communication partner. And hence, we now sit here today, not only are we now concerning ourselves about delivering branded content, brand-funded content, we're trying to build much richer relationships with clients, trying to understand about insights, and even as we heard from the challenges from some of those clients yesterday, we're actually trying to be our companies that are trying to generate ideas. I think it was Laura from... Unilever, who said, you know, what we want is big, bold ideas, and they can come from the media agency. And not surprisingly, I guess, Sir John Hegarty said, you know, well, actually, this is a crazy situation. I wish we could put the sort of, my interpretation, the glue back into the toothpaste. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, I think some of these challenges we've got now, you know, we've got a different seat at the table, and all of us in the room are finding these very difficult to, to answer all of these. The questions you had at the beginning about talent, about revenues... There's a mismatch between what clients want and how we're paid. We're still, our compensation is still largely 
uh, addressed by procurement officers, and yet we are trying to bring the type of solutions that we saw, and I know all of us in this room from the media agencies have got solutions, in some cases as smart as those we saw from Chuck Porter and some, from Sir John Hegarty. So we're in a fantastic position, but we have huge challenges.